Thank you very much, Senator. Senator Captain Savone, and you have 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Les Garrick. Um, welcome, Minister Hayes, uh, to this historic chamber. <laughs> but sadly, this debate is an inauspicious occasion. The Taoiseach appointed me to Shannon Aaron, aware that I would be an independent voice. My views on the future of Shannon Aaron have been formed with an effort to be free, constructive, and critical. I'm grateful to the Taoiseach for the opportunity to do so. I imagine he expects nothing less. Here are my views. The Taoiseach's proposal to abolish Shannon Aaron is ill-conceived, and it will damage not just our democracy, but this country's prospect of economic recovery and social sustainability. It is a proposal that will profoundly impact on our parliament, on our politics, and the Irish people. Even those with the most sketchy knowledge of Irish history know that a second chamber was previously abolished for a short period in the mid-1930s, but that Shannon Aaron was reconstituted in the 1930 constitution because of genuine democratic concerns and because bicameralism was and can remains the best way to ensure the proper scrutiny of legislation in an Irish context. And in 1935, when de Valera brought legislation before the, before the doll to abolish Shannon Aaron, James Dillon said, and I quote, let us in the doll resent the inclination to abolish the Shannon, just as we would resent the inclination of the Shannon to abolish this house, the doll. Let both houses realize that both are necessary for the liberties of the country. And let us join together to improve the efficiency of both houses, rather than joining in a trial of strength between the two houses aimed at the destruction of one. James Dillon's insights, former leader of Fine Gael, are as relevant today as they were over 75 years ago. Ireland today crucially needs a reform, Shannon, that can play a constructive role in guarding our liberties, in rebuild, rebuilding our economy and society, and ensure, in ensuring that all voices will be heard in our democratic life. In, instead, Shannon abolition will mean losing independent and minority voices. A unicameral system in Ireland will necessarily mean that there will be greater dominance of party politics and less room for independent and expert voices that the Shannon has been known for throughout its, its history. This independence in the past was largely guaranteed by the six seats reserved for university senators. With a reformed and democratically elected Shannon, as constructively imagined with two practical proposals by three independent senators, there will be more room for independence and for those who can represent the various minority groups within the diverse Ireland of the 21st century. Surely this country has learned the lessons of the past about the severe damage that can be done by cultural closure, closure insular debate, intolerance, and a refusal to listen to any other voices bar those of the majority opinion. If the Shannon is shut down, we will have a national parliament that is fully controlled by the whips, system, and guillotine. Minister Vradker, writing in one of our national new newspapers, propounds that freeing par parliamentarians of the whip system would increase the influence of the loudest and best organized lobby groups. Could this really be the case? Are the Irish people to believe that governments, including this one, have successfully withstood the influence of lobbyists? Those with the greatest resources, particularly our banks, have always had the best organized lobby groups. And where has that landed the Irish people? Furthermore, as pointed out last week by the Dolls Independent Voices and some of our own senators here this week, nearly 60% of all bills have been guillotined during this government's short tenure. Guillotined, as we all know, means that the time to scrutinize bills by the opposition, independent voices, and the government's own backbenchers is curtailed. Amendments put forward are not taken. I must respectfully ask the question, how are the Irish people to believe the government's reform promises of more dull time to scrutinize legislation once the Shannon is abolished if their own track record for openness to opposing and, uh, opposing and independent views is so poor. If the Shannon is abolished, 
we will have a national parliament that is rooted in the straitjacket of party politics with no space for individual principled commitment and experts who are not fearful of saying things to upset government. The Tisha claims that the Shannon's vocational system is a relic of the past, not fit for 21st Irish politics, century Irish politics. In contrast to the Taoiseach's proposals to pull down a pillar of our parliamentary democracy, Senator Quinn and I have brought forward cogent proposals that were commended by all shades of political opinion in this House in mid-May. Our radical vision of reform is that every citizen will vote for a Shannon candidate, not to represent geography, but to represent expertise and practical knowledge in farming or education or industry or equality or human rights or labor, or literature, or engineering, or culture. If the Shannon nominations and electorate are no longer controlled by party politics, we could unleash the power of elected expert lawmakers. Contrast this with the Taoiseach's proposals to form unelected expert panels to assist all committees. This sounds like more highly paid advisors for government. Do the Irish people need less politicians and more government appointed advisors? I think not. This will not only cost us money, it will cost us our democracy. Some of the biggest issues this country has to confront concerns figuring out how we care for our children and the elderly and how this is balanced in a compassionate way with the real demands of markets and business. I make no apologies for saying we need more women active in our democratic life to solve these kinds of problems. Our radical vision for reform, 50% women and 50% men in the Shannon, would make us world leaders in inclusive politics. Dahl reform only guarantees 30% women candidates for the next election. If we were to have equal women and men and extensive and genuine expertise, the lawmaking activities of the Shannon would revolutionize the way our politics checks and balances Dahl power, cabinet power, the four men in the center of cabinet power, and the whipping of parliamentarians to vote not only against their conscience at times, but also to vote against their practical knowledge and experience. I fail to understand why the government are not giving these reforms a chance and giving the people the option of reform. The Taoiseach has told the doll, told the doll in now this house that it is the most democratic act to give the choice of the future to the, of the Shannon to the people. The right to consult the sovereign people is one of the great democratic freedoms in our constitution, but in this instance, the government is being totally disingenuous. This referendum bill before our House today ensures that the people are being given only a restricted choice, abolition, or the status quo. Why is the government not giving the people the option of a reform, Shannon, and why did it not let the Constitutional Convention address this matter? When will the Taoiseach answer these questions? The government have tried to tie the question of Shannon abolition to the very pertinent issue of reform of a dysfunctional doll. Why is doll reform being predicated on the abolition of the Shannon? The Irish people deserve substantial and tested solutions for doll reform. But what kind of political reform does the government offer, offer us? Three or four opposition deputies to chair 14 Oireachtas committees. How much difference do you think that will make? A number of other committees to shadow government departments. That's what the committees are already supposed to be doing. Bringing heads of bill to committees prior to developing the full-blown bill? Then why did they not bring heads of bill on Shannon abolition to a committee? And again, I must respectfully ask a question. Is the government saying one thing and doing another? I would challenge anyone on the government side to give a rational explanation as to why they are not proceeding immediately with doll reform, which should and could happen in the morning if the government are truly committed to the reform agenda. And in conclusion, I want to address one final misnomer being peddled by the government, and other colleagues have done this too, and that's that their support for Shannon abolition is linked to their concerns at cutting the cost of politics. As we've heard, the Taoiseach says, the people, it would cost the Irish people 20 million a year. Again, Senator Mooney, the clerk of the Dáil, said the cost was under 10 million, and a finance officer at the Houses of the Oireachtas has recently stated, it is not possible at this stage to estimate the amount of actual net savings that would arise if the Shannon was abolished. So what is the true cost of abolishing the Shannon? What is the true cost of preventing the possibility of radical Shannon reform as outlined in the Shannon Bill 2013 proposed by Senator Quinn and I? What is the true cost of inadequate, untested, delayed doll reform? 
we will continue to have a broken system of government resulting in unemployment, home repossession, banks still with inordinate power, lack of indigenous industrial growth, with little left to build a society where we all look after each other. This will be the cost to our people. And I am confident the Irish people will say no to this immense cost. Thank you, Senator.